In this video, we're going to learn how to build a writing assistant AI using GPT-3 and Bubble.io. So no code tools. We'll do it in around 40 minutes. And this is what we're going to build. So we're going to build an e-commerce description generator and we're going to be able to save and copy our description. So let's just try it out. So let's say product name is hmm, mm -mm. NFT community. I mean, stop e-commerce. Let's say NFT t shirts, audience, crypto, Enthusiasts, I can't spell it, enthusiasts, um, confident, a t shirt company, t shirt made for NFTs. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Generate description, we generate the description. If we like it, we can save it. Introducing the world's first t-shirt made specifically for NFTs. This shirt is made of 100% breathable cutting and features a special design that makes it perfect for showing off your collection. Yada, 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 save it to the database, and there we go. So let's go straight into building this. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. We build things using no-code tools and AI, and it's fun. So come join us. See you soon. Let's go straight to it. So this is a new app. It's called Writing Assistant AI. I am going to use Atomic Fusion to get myself a Dashboard, UI kits, blah, blah. Is it the breeze one? I like the breeze one. Yes, copy and paste. And paste. Uh, let's say, let's say dashboard. So here I am just copying a dashboard because I don't want to reinvent uh, the wheel at all. So here we are, we have a dashboard. Let's say, uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's just call this copy, no, writing assistant AI. <laughs> very, very uh, bad name. But anyway, let's do it. So all that we need is, I don't need this one. This one can move to the top. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, where is it? 75. Can you see it? There we go. Zero. Okay, so all we need to do on the front end side is a form. Um, and what we need is, we need language, creativity, tone of voice, audience, product name, and description. So a few fields in the form. And I'm just gonna see if I can um, add a form without sort of reinventing the wheel as well. Hold on, hold on. So, okay, not now. Components, I guess forms are here. Form, yes, forms, give me a simple form. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Copy it. Okay, that works. Uh, but it needs to be in a group, so I need what? I need a group here. And then I need to put this bad boy, actually this whole bad boy, this whole bad boy in the, this is a group. And I'm gonna say roll here. And let's put it here. And let's put this bad boy also in the middle. In the middle, where am I there? No, row, no. Not row, column. And why is, aha, it's a light here. Okay, here we go. So this one, uh, we can move to the bottom. Let's just say, let's just say AI writing. Okay, uh, let's call this AI writing. I mean, I'm drafting now, you, you, get the, you get the point, right? This we don't need, remove this. Actually, we can remove this. Uh, we can keep the group if we want a button or there's some, some or something. So what we need is, um, what did I say? We need a language, creativity, tone of voice, audience, product name, description. So uh, as we've already mentioned, we can do a bunch of things here. We can do ads, e-commerce descriptions, positioning copy, blog post articles, website copy. Really, the sky's the limit. Um, only thing sets that sets the limits is your creativity and what you choose to pursue. So let's start with e-commerce descriptions. 
So let's call this actually e-commerce description. E-commerce descriptions. Okay. And I'm putting this one where? Putting it last. Nope, this is not the one. This is my page blah, 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 blah. It's not how you do it. Aha, uh -huh, there, there it is. I didn't see it. Okay, e-commerce descriptions, and I know these things are not aligned, which is kind of annoying, but it's not really essential right now, because uh, we just want to get this um, forward, right? So e-commerce descriptions, this we don't need. For now, this we don't need. Uh, here we should say generate, generate the descriptions. So what did I say? We need uh, language creativity to enforce audience product description. Okay, so a few, a few of those are drop downs, like uh, language, for example. Multi line input is the description. So let's put that one in there. Um, with whatever, max. And we want the formatting here. We probably want the conditional as well, copy conditional formatting. <clears throat> Uh, no, didn't I do it? Copy conditional formatting, paste formatting, at which point I will paste um, that conditional formatting. So here, layout, we're so, what are we talking? Not layout, sorry, here we are. Where is the width? Uh, height 48, okay, it's in width, whatever that means. I mean, it mean, it's obvious what it means, but width, where is the width? Nope, there we are. Okay, so this was the multi-line input. Let's, uh, so this will be the description actually. Description. Uh, initial content, no, that's all right. Mm -mm -mm. I'm looking for a bit more height. So minimum height, so let's say it's 200. Ah, maybe 150 then. 150 is okay for description and I also want some padding on everything. So maybe 15, 15, 15, 15. I think that's fair. Maybe a bit too much, but it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna say, if I copy the formatting, I will it copy the padding is the question. Yes, okay, that's nice. So uh, that was the multi line. This is just the text. So let's say this was the, uh, what do we have? We have language, audience, tone of voice, audience. Okay, audience. Audience is an input field. Uh, so we have audience here. Uh, description, product, product name is an input field as well. Product name. Okay. So we can uh, actually move this uh, like this. So we have audience, product name, audience description. So let's do tone of, tone of voice and language. and. Uh, those are drop downs. So let's copy the formatting, paste the formatting, copy the conditional formatting, paste the conditional formatting. This needs to be a little bit higher uh, because of my padding. So actually, just remove the padding for this one. So let's say 10 here and uh, 10 on top. Okay, drop down A. This was the language. And let's say for now we have English, default option should be English. So we have English, let's say English, uh, what else? Spanish, Russian, Mandarin. So let's say Chinese. Uh, English, Spanish, Russian, French, French, Arabic. Okay, let's pause for there now. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be uh, not fixed with. Okay, so we have language, that's one drop down. I'm just copying that command D. We have tone of voice and tone of voice. So let's say friendly, professional, confidence. Mm. Energetic. I don't know, let's start with that. So the voice default value can be uh, friendly. Okay, so we have product name, audience, in language, tone of voice and description. What else? Creativity, yes. So that's also actually a drop down. 
So creativity, as we've uh, mentioned, it's uh, it's to what degree we should generate new things, um, or to what degree we should ad adhere to the uh, um, the original impetus. So in the um, sort of vanilla um, model of OpenAI, the temperature range, if set at zero, means you won't be creative at all. So it won't generate anything that's not based on the text or in the text necessarily. And the more you go towards one or like 100% creativity, the more it, uh, it, it, the more, the higher probability it has to generate sort of original, not original per se, but original when compared to your input text um, generations. So play around with that. This will be a an approximation of that. So we'll have three levels. Ah, sorry, levels. So uh, creativity, creativity. Should it should say creative creativity. So we can have low, and we can have normal, and we can have high. Uh, default value would be normal, which would e equal the middle, so like 0.5, because the range is 0 to 1. Okay, so I think this is it, e-commerce description. So let's just rename these, input product name, input audience, in drop down language, drop down voice, drop down creativity multi-line description so let's just say input product description okay so product you should say product all right so now we have a form we can input uh, things into this form and um, when i generate descriptions when we connect it to the open ai it'll take all this as input it'll give us an output uh, in a list probably and we will uh, display the outputs here and that's basically it so the next thing to do will be to uh, set up the API connector with OpenAI and also talk about, okay, when we actually do the API call, how are we going to save or um, store some of the input here? So let's move on and we will go to plugins. We will add a plugin. We will add the API connector. There we are. Install this one. Add another API. Uh, open AI. Oh, let's actually say GPT-3 for now. Authentication is uh, basic off. So, if you don't know how to set an, up an API, here is a crash course. In order to understand what we're going to do here with the API connector and Open AI, and that is to say GPT-3, you need to understand GPT-3 and how it works. So, here is the GPT-3 playground. And this is just how it is. So you can see um, a, a bunch of things really, but you write something here. So we could say, write a story about a potato, potato, and that'll give us something, right? He once was his bird named Steve. He was happy potato who loved life. One day Steve was having to feel with his friends when a group of mean kids came by and started picking him. Yada, yada, yada. So it generates things based on a prompt. This, in this case, was the prompt. Write a story about a potato. So that's the intent we set for the output. And when we want to steer the output, we have a bunch of different options. We have models. This is the best model. You can check out the other ones. Temperature is how creative should it be. Maximum length is the length response. Stop sequence is if you want to stop the generation at a certain sequence. Uh, frequency. And we have frequency penalty, which if you increase, increases the likelihood to, sorry, decreases the likelihood to uh, repeat the same lines and the presence penalty, which if you increase that, increases the likelihood to talk about new topics. So you can steer a little bit, uh, usually, sorry, usually by um, default. Um, I set frequency penalty at uh, 0 0.5 and presence penalty at zero. So let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You can play around with this, well, of course it's 0 point, actually 0 0.5. So, in our form field, we said what? We said a product description. So let's say write an e-commerce e product description. Or actually write, write an e-commerce product description. Yeah, that's okay. And we had a bunch of things in a prompt. We had language, we had tone of voice, we had audience, we had creativity, and we had product name. Had product actually description but let's just say description uh, what else did we have description product name audience terms voice creativity language okay that's it so let's just see language let's do English tone of voice let's do uh, confident audience let's say 
football coaches creativity is actually this input the temperature so we don't need it in the playground um, product name let's say this is uh, called footsie description an ai powered shoe that helps you run faster all right and then here is the actual end of the prompt so we say product description so what will happen when I click submit is it will write an e-commerce product description and it will load these details like in this language with this tone of voice to this audience with this name and expand this description so what is happening here is actually what we're going to replicate in the writing assistant here and with the API connector the only difference is instead of getting the response here we're sending this prompt as an API call and we'll get a response that we can then display inside the app here. So this is all we're doing essentially. So let's submit this. And you'll see right away that it generates an e-commerce description that is more geared towards influence and conversion. So looking to get a competitive edge on the football field, then you need footsie. The AI powered shoe that helps you run faster. You see cutting edge technology, Futsi gives you real time feedback on your running form and technique, helping you to correct any errors and improve your speed. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, Futsi is the perfect training partner to help you reach your full potential. So don't wait any longer, get Futsi today and take your game to the next level. That's not bad, you know? So this is just an example, and of course, this can be scaled in any direction with any type of prompting, and you can do it for anything really. And this is a zero shot model, meaning we didn't give any example of a product description here. It, we just gave it room um, to generate it based on what we had uh, here in the description. So this is what we're going to do. Now let's do it. Okay. Okay. So for the API connector in OpenAI, all we need to do is go to the playground, click view code for anything you've done, if you want, and we can see it. And let's actually look at it in curl first so there you see uh, headers content type authorization and the it's bearer and then your open ai api key so let's do that first so we have uh okay so let's add a call g pt3 completions for completion maybe we're gonna do it as an action we're gonna do a post and uh uh, there is the API, sorry, the endpoint. So here's the endpoint. Put that there. We're gonna have some headers. One was what? Content type and application slash JSON. And one is the authorization. And that's the API key. Um, authorization API key. And then we have a body so for our body here let's actually view it in json because yes you saw this is json object so let's just take this one for now so i'll po i'll paste in everything we had and instead of the model here maybe you want this dynamic so we'll say model and then uh, whoops let's say let's actually grab this one command x Command the X, then model, and then put that here. If I uncheck private, it means that I can change it. Prompt, we'll do the same for prompt for now. So prompt, and let's say write a story about a potato. Okay, we can also do the same for tokens. Tokens and let's say 250 default value. So we might want to change these later on. Okay, let's initialize this call. Of course, I forgot the header. So I'll add my API key and then we'll initialize the call again. He added, initialize. And here we go. Now we have set up the OpenAI API connection to Bubble. Show the raw data. Uh, potato, potato, a potato was once a happy little spot, enjoyed nothing more than being boiled, baked, or mashed, but one day it was unceremoniously peeled and shoved into pieces. Okay, um, so it works, right? So we have this call here. Now all these dynamic values we can, we can change. And for us, the prompt, for example, so here we have the prompt, which is a mask text. And for us, when we do the prompt, 
will have a variable in the prompt, which is you know, these things. So that ultimately we go to a point where we, um, where we uh, ask for things like this. So, okay, now we have the uh, GT3 Open AI API connected. So let's move to the next step, which is um, creating a prompt that we can send that will actually give us something like this, right? So let's start with that right away. So when I click generate description, I wanna have, actually, let me do this. This is just for me now. So let me add do complete prompt. Oops. Complete prompt. And uh, this does not have to be fixed with like that. It can also be, I just wanna see this for now. Uh, then, okay. Uh, so, this should be write a story. Actually, I'm going to use to this. I'm going to take this one that we already have. Write a story about primary description, language, and here, let's see what I'm starting to do. Language will be language, drop down language value. The pull coaches here we're talking about audience. So these are dynamic values, variables basically. Is it audience, audience, input audience value. Um, mm -hmm. Product name, product names value. And description is what? Product description value and product description is the output. So this is the prompt that we want. So I'm doing it for prompt now because I want to see that this actually works. And when we click generate descriptions, what we're going to do is I'm going to do GT3 completion. But it's going to be that one and the prompt is going to be a dynamic value. Uh, complete prompts. Oh, of course, it's just a text that needs to be input. Okay, let's actually do this. Let's then set a state. Set state of an element. Uh, 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 maybe we can name this whole thing. Group e-commerce description. Descriptions. And then we set the state of e-commerce descriptions and we set a custom state. And this is the prompt and this is the text. And the would be prompts. Would be prompts. Um, aha! Okay, it still needs to be an input. Let's do this then. So, Duplicate that one, put that in front. First, I'll have to do this again, probably. Yep, I will have to do it again. So let me just do it again. Give me a second, I'll delete this one. Let's prompt. And do I even need? Probably not. Not need a state right now. Okay, and then we're gonna get a response, and then I want to show the response here. I guess so. Let's add a bidding group. So let's just see, let's preview this. And we have our name Hootsie. Should say Hootsie, right? Yeah. Audience, football coaches, say Russian, confident, hi. This is a shoe made with AI or something. Okay. That is pretty good. And then we have a part description that will be generated. Generate description. 
it will generate a description based on this prompt that we've given it. So here I can see the prompt, I can see the, that I'm steering it the way I want, and now it's just like this, right? So these are now dynamic values inside here. And then we're gonna generate the descriptions, then I'm gonna capture response and uh, show the response here. So the question is if I should generate right, a list, right? Write a few e-commerce product descriptions. Maybe we do it like that, just to see how that turns out. And let's put that at 600. So this, it's now generating the first one. Okay, it actually just generates the one. Write a few e-commerce product descriptions. Maybe if I did this. Mm -hmm. Right, a couple. Generate the first one. Okay, just one. Actually, let's start this. Let's start this. Okay, so we have the generate the descriptions. Let me generate this one. It will give me a response. So what I want to have here, so I want to show our response, right? So let's do a let me add a small group here. Uh, 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 uh. Put it in here. Go uh, formatting. It's formatting. What I want to show here is hmm. so let's see how, how does the response look like let me just reinitialize the call and see what a response might look like So it gives me choices, text is the response. So here we have choices, completion choices, text, Oop, the response, text, uh -huh, data source. Okay, boom, and let me grab a text then, put that in here. text and I'm gonna have this be remove the style put it 14 don't make it fixed and we'll actually see what comes out of this all right brand name footsie audience uh, hockey coaches Let's say energetic. Hi, this isn't uh, connected enough, doesn't matter. Description an AI powered ice skating shoe, whatever it's called. I'm going to generate and it's going to pop up here some, some thing. Maybe I need to set the state on this group.
Okay, so I changed it. So I set the state, uh, completion as a state, and then I feed the state's first choice text here. So let's do it again, just to see if it works. Oops. Okay, so we have a foot save, blah, blah, blah. Generate description. Yes. This is the perfect chart for the cache location, made with cut and t-shirts comfortable and breathable for a day after this reaction until t-shirt comes in the right of course. It shouldn't be a t-shirt though. I ice skating shoe. Again. Okay, yeah, it works. Look for football, they can give an edge and competition, yada, yada, yada. So we have e-commerce descriptions now, more or less ready. Um, we can hide this prompt. Uh, that is actually just for me to see. This could also be a state, that we save the prompt as a state, and then we generate, and we'll set the state as completion again. Um, mm -mm -mm. So the question is, if we do that, yeah, so we could set it here. Actually, I'll just have the prompt, I'll hide it. So this will not be visible on page load. It's for me only. Maybe the format here. Uh, here's one. There's this one. Generate descriptions. What's these issues? I icon. Uh huh. They produced. Um, let me just see if I can. Icon, Ionic. No, wrong one. Ionic. Ah, and the issues disappeared. Okay, so let's just try this one again. But remove the, uh, the debug mode here. Okay, and oh, I also need to do this collapse one, you know, which is it collapses the height when something is hidden. So we don't have this huge gap as you saw. Okay, we have e commerce description, product name, mm, electric, fog, <laughs> audience, um, burning man, participants. Spell correctly, participants. English, um, professional, this isn't a magical fog machine that um, generates the best fog for big locations. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should say smoke, it's not necessarily fog, is it? The electric fog machine is the perfect way to create an unforgettable atmosphere for any beginning. With its ability to generate a thick, dense fog is perfect for creating a magical, otherworldly ambience. Whether you're setting the scene for a Halloween party or creating a mythical setting for a wedding, the electric fog machine is sure to make your event one to remember. All right. So this is now what? Well, this is e-commerce descriptions. We have a description. I mean, it's ugly, but it generates one. Uh, maybe if we want to generate a few. So we can say it generates more, and then we can put this one here. But okay, this is this is, this is a start. So let's move on. We're gonna add some more things now. Okay, so what I did now is I just added a save button here, and uh, uh, removed the background of the group and expanded the width of the input, uh, sorry, the output text here. So what I want to do is I want to be able to save uh, good generations that I like into my database. So I just added a save button. When I click this, I will save it but I need a type. And I'm thinking maybe we can have a library here. So let's say library, and we can have saved, uh, I don't know, let's say product descriptions here, product descriptions. We can add this later on, but I'll, I'll keep it uh, lean a minute for now. So in the data, let's go to data types, create a new type called product descriptions, mm, right? We have a type and we have an actual description, description, and, um, it's a text, 
maybe we should actually save it. Um, question is if we should save the prompt as well. I think actually yes, because what we could do later on is if you have a bunch of product descriptions that is great for your company or your products, whatever, and you have saved the prompt, then we can add all these examples and fine tune the model, which will perform even better. So uh, I think it makes sense to save these things as well. So question is, if we need that, then we need tone. This is all B text. Tone, um, uh, language, tone, language, creativity, doesn't matter too much right now. Audience, audience, product name, right? Product name, and product descriptions, uh, product name, tone, audience. Type name, tone, product name, language, audience. What we need, the description as well. I thought I added this. Great, so we have tone, product name, language, descriptions, description, audience. Did I miss something? Description, audience, tone, descriptive language. So we have different descriptions. We have the output description and we have the input description. So let's say um, input description. Because input description is what the prompt was, right? And description will be, let's say, the output, output description. Okay. So when I click save, mm -hmm. yeah, I need this. So when I click save, I create a thing in the database. Create a new thing. We're gonna create a product description. Add all fields. Audience, input audience value, and description, text part descriptions. No. Description, input part descriptions, value, language. Output description, we don't have. Yeah, we do have it. Completion choice text, product name, name. And tone value. All right. So when we when we click save, we're gonna save this into the database. And uh, maybe we want to display what's been saved. Actually, let's see here. Group e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And what happens if we do this? And that happens. So I'm thinking not that much probably. How much does this have? Where's the padding on this one? Twenty. Okay, so let's do 20 then. 20, 20, all right. And you will probably see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna save our things here, right? Saved descriptions. This is gonna be like this as well. And I'm gonna have a reading group. Just say, let's remove this, all these things, all these things, and um, put this one at the top. Mm, I need a whole, 
need a hole. Put that here. Ah, oh, not there. Uh, okay. Okay. And no, it's gonna be a column. Don't need fixed width. Do need a max width, however. Okay, so far. Let's do this for now. Uh, okay. Can have copy here for later on. What I want now is I want a repeating group and I want to put this in this group here. So let's say repeating group saved descriptions. And this is going to be product descriptions, data servers, do a search for user product descriptions. Okay, so this just searches for all product descriptions we've saved. And um, what do we have? We have so this is going to be no product description parent groups thing, which is what, where am I? I'm here and then I'm here. Ah, okay. Product description and uh, do a search for product descriptions. Is this an issue or is it this? Where's the repeating group? Is this the repeating group? Aha. Uh -huh. It's very small. This is what I'm doing. Rows. Let's do two. Let's do one row actually. Okay. And in that row, let's just say I want to be super clear on what I'm doing now. In that row, I'm going to have a group. And um, can also have this. This one can be removed. Um, let's do it like this. We'll change all this later. Copy. Output description, yes. There. Okay, and where are all the issues coming from? Uh -huh. <sighs> ah, this one. This one, we don't need this one. Okay, so let's go here again. Let's generate the description and see if we can save it. So now we have here, let's see, FTSE again, audience, football coaches, English friendly normal, AI powered football shoe to make you run faster. Generate. Generates, if I click save, it's gonna create something. Aha, uh -huh. and it does actually display it here, but what I forgot to do. Current sales per description. Save. Let's just see where we're at, save. Text. Okay, let's look in the database. Input description. Why did it not save the output description? So, output description parent groups text. I did not save it. Let's try again. Footsie, football coaches, and um, 
AI power two for faster running. Generate. Save. Save. Aha! It's the e commerce prompt. Of course, it needs to be this one. I need to save the text group e commerce description. So we have uh, output description generation. So save. I'm just going to edit this one. And output description is going to be output. Description generations. Ah, of course, it needs to be an input field if I'm gonna. So then I'm gonna see e commerce, group e commerce descriptions, completion uh, is what I'm gonna save because that's the state we're feeding into this one, right? So now let me just delete a few things in the database here. Uh -huh. Delete, yes, please. And we're here again. Let's do it again. And we have footsie, foot ties, yeah, sure. Football, coaches, an AI powered, an AI powered shoe made for faster running. Let's generate. Okay, save this one. Ah, and here we go. I mean, it's not aligned, but it works. So we can generate descriptions and once we live, we can save and now we have them in our database and then we can copy and do whatever. So I'm just gonna clean this up very fast so it looks a little bit better. And also we can generate more examples than one per um, prompt here, but I think this is okay. I'm gonna align this as well. So now we have... Uh, it working actually. So what can we do else? E-commerce description. Let's say Mushi. And um, I don't know, maybe uh, tech, tech workers, <laughs> very ambiguous. And I'm gonna say confident, and it's gonna be a mushroom, mushroom, how is this? Mushroom based coffee for more energy. And let's generate. Looking for an energetic coffee alternative? Check out Mushi, a mushroom-based coffee that's perfect for tech work. It's a little, little extra boost. So let's save this one as well. And <laughs> now we have this one as well. Um, so yeah, uh, this is great fun. I'm gonna add also that if you copy, if you copy, you're gonna copy the right thing. So let me just clean it up quickly. 
So I cleaned this up a little bit and what I did was uh, I uh, yeah, made these two columns instead of one and I cleaned up this a little bit and I also made the, uh, I added the option to copy the clipboard and paste it somewhere. So we can paste it now here and we have the pasting. So let's try another one and we will be finished. So let's name this product writing, writing assistant AI, audience, YouTube, viewers, English friendly, normal, a video <laughs> course about how to build an AI writing assistant with GPT-3 and Bubble. Fast. Generate descriptions. Generates. Is it any good? Are you struggling to keep up the demand for content? You know what? We'll just save this one for now. We should get a little bit of In this course, you learn how to build a writing system. Yeah, using blah, blah, to be able to quickly create the content. Yes, that's true. Okay. So we can have a bunch of these now. You just save it here. And um, I'm just going to clean this up also. But essentially, we're done. All right. So hopefully you like this content. And um, we are probably under an hour. And we built a... Uh, uh, draft of an app that is writing assistant AI. So this is how you can use GPT-3 and Bubble and you can build anything. If you're interested in content like this, please head over to avalanlabs.co and sign up for our Bubble course. And also, of course, subscribe to this channel. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.